Hello, in this video I am going to show you how to set up PlayStation 1 emulation using the EPSXE emulator on a Windows machine. If you're interested on setting up a Mac or Linux based systems, don't worry, I will have videos covering that setup tutorial as well. But if you're still here, I'm assuming that you want to do it for Windows, the process is pretty simple. So what you want to do is, is, is go to a browser, go to EP psxe.com go to downloads and just download the windows version the latest version which as of now is 2.0.5 click that you'll start downloading i've already got it downloaded so i'm not going to download it again and next what you need to do is get a bios file for the playstation 1 so if you just google ps1 bios file there's a great website called Planet EMU. Planet EMU. There are others. You can get others as well. The reason I'm recommending this one is if you look here, they provide a bunch of different BIOSes. So if you want a Japanese version, depending on you know what year, what version, you can choose you know the exact version that you need. I recommend SCPH1001, which is the USA version, and this is probably the version that you'll come across the most. You might come across SCPH7502, which is a European version. A lot of the time, you'll probably be playing USA games, so I recommend this BIOS right here. And, and, and this BIOS should you know, get you going for literally any game out there regardless. So I've already got it downloaded, but if you click this, and click this telecharger button this will download it but the, like i said i've already got it downloaded and that's it that's all you need in terms of files apart from games which i'm assuming you've got from another source just a little disclaimer the bios file you should only be downloading this bios file if you already own a you know physical playstation one you know i have a few so you know it's okay for me but that's just a little disclaimer this is a video for educational purposes and yeah okay so let's continue if i go to where i downloaded all of this and that is in my downloads folder and i've got it all right here so you want to extract the epsxe and if i just say extract all i don't need to show it yet and i need to do the same for the bios file as well so if i extract and if i copy this if it's named something slightly different doesn't matter the name doesn't exactly actually matter so you copy this if it's not a zip file that's fine as well as long as it's a bin file like so so we copy that and go to epsxe go to bios paste it here even though this says erase me you don't need to you can if you want to the file is not necessary but you won't you know you know cause any problems and last step is this is optional once we actually launch up psxe you can manually go to a specific directory and load your games from there but i would recommend is actually copying your games so i can just copy this folder copying your games into the iso folder right here the great thing about doing this method is in epsxe we'll set it up so it's linked to this folder and we can just refresh any new game we add you'll just get that game instead of us having to you know go in and manually finding the games on our system so now we're ready to launch go to epsxe.exe launch this up and first time launching you'll you know be you know given a little what's it called configuration menu let's click config you want to select the bios which is this one that i just added and click next for this you want to select pete's opengl2 gpu core 2.0.0 click next select this core click next and chances are you're running you know probably windows 7 windows 8 windows 10 so you want the one that is for windows xp windows vista which is this one right here click next and 
You can change the controller configuration. You can hook up other controllers as well. I want to create separate videos for all of that, but I'm going to leave this as default because this is just for you know demonstration purposes, and I, I'm, I'm not going to be playing the whole game on this video. So, but you can you know configure this as you want to. I'm going to click OK, click Next, click Done, and we're done. It's configured. So to make sure that the actual game, you know, it's all going to work okay. Go to video. This is just an optional thing. I'm going to select windowed mode. And the reason I'm selecting windowed mode is so it doesn't, you know, just fill the entire screen. It's just a little window. So if I go to file, go to run BIOS. And if this happens, it's going to crash in a few seconds. If this happens, I'll show you how to fix it. Because I was having this problem, and it's kind of a silly little you know, problem to be fair. I don't see why this should be crashing out of the box, but there's just one little thing that's not selected properly. Because what should happen is the memory card menu should appear. If I go back to here, if that crash occurs, it's because you need to go to options, CPU overclocking. We're not over overclocking the CPU, so don't worry about that. We just need to select times one. You can do if you want to, but if we select times one, as you can see, it's got times one. Now, if we go to file, run BIOS, as you can see, that little standard thing pops up. And that confirms that it is actually working, that the BIOS has loaded successfully. So I'll close this. I'm not interested in this menu at the moment. Okay. So now that that's all done, obviously you can go here, you can, and let me just reopen it so I can access all of the settings. So you can go to video, you can change these to your heart's content, you can change the resolution, you can go from fast to nice, I'm just going to go to nice because I've got a pretty powerful system, you can handle it, you can display frame rate, you know, that, these are custom stuff. The other thing I want to show you is if you go to memory cards, these will automatically be configured, but if you create your own memory card, you just go to select and select the memory card, which is in the EPSXE folder, mem cards. They've already provided two, but you can duplicate them so you can have multiple memory cards. And I'll just click cancel because I haven't changed anything there. Last thing, you can go to run ISO and go to where your ISOs are and manually select them. But what we want to do is go to open game list Go to folders, click the menu button, go to you know, where our EPSXE folder was, go to ISOs, click OK, click OK, click refresh. As you can see, it's got the game. Click get covers, it'll take a few seconds, it'll get the cover, and that's it. So instead of Yeah, so instead of having to go to run ISO and then selecting it, even if it's a bin Q file, I, the ISO option will work as well. You can just go to open game list. If you add any more game, click refresh, you know, get covers. And now if we open this game, you'll lo it, it takes a few seconds to load up, but once it's loaded, you're all good to go. And you can choose full screen. You can choose full screen mode if you want to, but just for demonstration purposes, I'm choosing windowed mode. So let me just show you it working. Again, you'll probably want to customize the controls for you know your preferences. Maybe even connect up a game controller to it, and you're ready to go. So you got EPSXE working on a Windows machine. Like I said, I'll have tutorials for Mac and Linux based machines as well. So. By default, the arrows or the D-pad is mapped to the arrows. X is mapped to Z, I think. Square is mapped to X. Honestly, that's all the controls we need for Crash Bandicoot 1. But you'll probably want to modify the controls for other games. So as you can see, it is working fantastic. Like, really smooth. Uh, I press the wrong button okay if I click escape it just exits out of the game so that's it for setting EPSXE emulator for PlayStation 1 games on a Windows machine if you have any questions 
feel free to pop me a message. And as usual, I look forward to seeing you in the next video.